everyone, my name is Katie and welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited for this video that I'm about to do because it is all about reading bullet journaling or just reading journaling. If you don't know, reading journaling has kind of taken booktube by storm these past couple of months and myself included. I've been swept up in the, the wave <laughs> of the trend and it's just so much fun and a really cool way to express your creative side mixed with organizing your reading. So I just think it's a really fun thing to do. Definitely grown in popularity just because I think it works so well for a lot of people. So with that being said, today I'm going to do a comprehensive guide on how to get started with a reading bullet journal that basically includes everything that I've learned so far. When I started this, I literally had never really bullet journaled before in my life. I think I had one bullet journal that lasted like five pages and I was like, I can't do this. I'm not artistic. Like I've never been an artistic type of person. I've never really felt like I had any creative outlets, which is what's so great about booktube is making videos I found was a really good creative outlet for me because I have creative energy. I didn't know what to do with it. I found booktube, that's a great avenue. And this reading bullet journal is also just really fun. It's fun to create, it's fun to do something, but it can be a little bit overwhelming with where to start. So I'm here to kind of go through everything that you need in terms of supplies, in terms of like how to figure out what kinds of spreads you want to do, how to draw things, how to do calligraphy, anything that I've learned along the way, I'll be sharing with you. And at the end, I will do a flip through and talk a little bit more in depth about each thing that I've done in my bullet journal. I'm really excited to share this because I've just had so much fun doing my bullet journal. I've done a lot of clips of me doing it in past vlogs. So I will, you know, leave those in the description below. And as well, I'll talk about this a little bit more later, but I will be leaving a link to a reading bullet journal playlist down below compiled with a bunch of reading bullet journal or just bullet journal in general spreads and videos that I've found helpful for me. So obviously the most basic place to start is supplies. I'll be giving some recommendations of different bullet journaling brands that you can use, but the first one, this is my first failed bullet journal, is a moleskin, and it's the dotted notebook, as you can see here, um, in soft cover, although I do believe that they sell hardcover versions as well. As you can see, it's very flimsy, but I liked it for the purposes that I used it for at that point. Yeah, I did not really do much bullet journaling. I maybe like five pages filled out in here. The only thing I would say about this is that it there's not a lot of pages and it is very flimsy, so I feel like it would get hard to close as you bullet journaled a lot more and it's just like not that durable. The current bullet journal that I have that I love is the Let's Turn 1917 bullet journal. It's hardcover and has dotted pages. Um, and what's cool about this one is the pages are numbered. There is a table of contents in the front as well, which I filled out, which is nice if you are someone that likes to keep everything indexed. And it has a little pocket in the back. This one is a good size for me. There are some out there that are a little bit bigger than this, but I enjoy the smaller size and I don't find that the pages bleed through too much with all of the pens and stuff that I use. And it's been really good as a first like legit bullet journal for me. Really enjoyed this brand. And I will leave links in the description down below to all these products that I'm mentioning. The next brand that I will be mentioning is the Clever Fox dotted bullet journal. And I've seen this one around booktube a bit and it just seems like it comes in a lot of different colors and again has maybe thicker pages um, as well as a cool fox on the cover. Um, that's another brand that is sold on Amazon and it has also like binding so that you can lay it flat. A pen loop. So if you like pen loops, you can do that and it comes in a bunch of different colors. The other brand that I've had my eye on is Archer and Olive and they have such pretty bullet journals. They have a blackout bullet journal where the pages are all black. It seems like they're really thick. I think some people on here have used it and mentioned them. I'm potentially maybe going to get that one in the future. I don't know, but it just seems from what I've seen in videos that the pages are really, really super thick and it's a little bit bigger than the Let's Turn. But honestly, there's nothing wrong with just a good old dotted notebook, wherever you may find one. You can order them on Amazon or you can go to Barnes and Noble, sometimes they have them, and just find a notebook and start. So the next part of the supplies is that you need something to write with and draw with. So I will go into the supplies that I have now. This may seem super simple, but you really just want to start out have something to draw fine lines with and something to color in with. When I first started, I used only markers, so it was really hard for me to get like the fine lines of everything. So that is a mistake that I made that definitely make sure you have 
something for the finer details and something to color in. So when I first started bullet journaling, I was using, as I said, just markers, and I use these sometimes still to color in, and I have this cool pencil case I got at Target, but these are the Stead Ladder markers, and they're double tipped, which is cool, and there's so many colors. And so one side has a thicker tip, and the other one has a fine tip, and these are good for doodles, but again, they might bleed through a little bit more than some other stuff, so I don't use them as much anymore. What I mostly use for coloring is honestly just some good old Crayola colored pencils. You can get these for super cheap pretty much anywhere, but it just has like the standard colors, and I've found that I've had plenty of variety within just a regular 24 color pack. Maybe I'll get a bigger pack of Crayola pencils at some point, but so far, so good with these. For the finer lines, I mostly use Paper Mate Ink Joy pens. I find that they're quick drying and they're really good for writing. They don't smudge and come in a lot of different colors. They're pretty good to doodle with as well. And I have just really liked these. You kind of almost get like the smoothest of a gel pen without all of the kind of like smudging that can come with a gel pen. And you can like erase over them and it won't smudge. This may seem obvious, but a pencil, eraser, glue stick, pencil sharpener, and ruler are pretty much just the basics of what you need. A pencil to kind of go over things in pencil before you outline them in the permanent <laughs> pen, glue stick if you want to glue stuff in, uh, an eraser to erase the pencil marks underneath when you outline, and a ruler so that you can draw straight lines. Some other pens that I have in my collection that I maybe don't use as much as I have these pens from Muji. And what's cool about Muji pens, it's like a um, Japanese stationery brand, is it will tell you like what the thickness of the tip is in millimeters. So you can get different size pens and they come in fun colors. So I have a 0.38 here. I have this clicky one, I think is a thicker one. Another 0.38 in blue and the teal one, so I'll just use these on occasion. And the 0.38 is like a really fine tip, so sometimes that's good for, again, finer details. Another option for some fine line details is the Stead Letter Tri Plus Fine Liners. I use these for annotating, but I do sometimes use them in my bullet journal as well. And these ones have more of a marker, like felt tip feel versus the Inkjoy pens, which are a little bit more pen-like. Scissors are also always good to have. The next thing that is cool is I have some gel pens from Buxon, honestly like a random brand on Amazon, but I have a silver one, a gold one, and there's a white one somewhere in here. Um, and those are just fun to add some metallic accents. Another supply that's nice to have is a washi tape. I have a bunch of rolls here, but I have even more. They're mostly sparkly. You can get them at Michael's or the craft store or on Amazon. And I've just kind of have been going to Michael's and buying the ones that catch my eye, which happen to be all sparkly ones. And they're good to like line a page with or put on the sides and you can just kind of be creative with it. The other supply that I found has really helped me are these Tombow. And these are calligraphy pens. So um, I'll get into a little bit more like what the calligraphy is and how you can learn it later on in the video. And then this is the Tombow dual brush pen. So this one is like a full brush pen for brush calligraphy. And this one is a fine tip. And uh, and these ones are um, kind of the same thing, but finer tips than the brush pens. You can do a little bit finer writing with them. So these are really fun. I don't have too many of these, but I will probably expand my collection as time goes on. And these are really good for writing and for coloring things in with like a marker. One of the random supply that I picked up is just some washable watercolors from Crayola. These were literally $3 at Target, but they work pretty well for if you just want to do some fun doodling with watercolors. I use them for like a background to make it look cool. So the next piece is basically how to learn to do spreads and where you can get ideas from for in terms of like reading journal specific spreads. So I'll go again into that in a little bit more detail in the flip through of my bullet journal, but for general purposes, there are a lot of people that have already put out bullet journaling content. There's some bullet journaling Instagrams, a lot of bullet journaling YouTube channels, and more recently, a lot of people on BookTube have been starting to do spreads that are more specifically reading journal. So I, again, as I said, I have a specific playlist down below filled with people that have lots and lots of ideas, but in general, I tend to get ideas from watching those other videos and as well as just going on Pinterest, especially when I'm trying to decide a theme for a month. 
I was like, oh, this month I want to do a butterfly type theme. And then I will go on Pinterest, type butterfly spreads, and then see all the different kinds of doodles that people do, and then kind of do my own based on that. So I think the best place really to get ideas is to just watch a lot of other videos or scroll along on Pinterest and get an idea of what you want to do and kind of decide what your personal style will be. My style has kind of definitely evolved over time, but some ideas for spreads that I do on like a yearly basis is I have tracking all the books that I've read in the year, like a YouTube growth tracker, a tracker for the signings that I've been, a tracker for my videos that I've posted, a buddy read tracker, and a readathon tracker. And then every month I will do a anticipated page where I have new releases listed and then my TBR listed and then I have a wrap up page and then what I do in between there really just varies. Sometimes I'll do quote pages, I'll do readathon spreads, reading trackers, all sorts of different things. You just try out different things each month and then see what works for you. What's nice about the bullet journal is that it's very free flowing and you can make of it what you want. You're not stuck to any particular format. Um, and then in terms of getting ideas, really just Pinterest is the best place to go. I will have my Pinterest board linked down below where I just put all of my pins that I get inspiration from and I kind of go from there, try and imitate a lot of drawings. A lot of it is taking pencil and just trying to follow along the drawings because I don't have this innate sense of how to draw something. I can't just think I'm gonna draw like this cool fish and draw it like it, that doesn't work for me. I do need to kind of have something else to follow along with and then if I see how something else is drawn then I can draw it myself. But like I don't have this innate artistry within me that is not how my brain works but it's good to know that there are sources out there that you can find how to draw things and if I see something I can follow along with it pretty well. In terms of the brush calligraphy that you see everyone kind of having that particular bullet journal type style, it is called, I think it's like brush calligraphy or something like that and I learned that specifically from some different YouTube trials that will be on that playlist and I basically took the Tombrow brush pen because you do need the type of brush pen. These three guys, but the idea is that on the upstroke you go really light and then you press down on the downstroke and that's what gives it the alternating like light strokes and heavy stroke type look and that's kind of like how to perfect that and honestly again all that I do to learn these types of different calligraphy styles is just copy what other people do because I can't think of it on my own. Other things that you can do that I've started to incorporate are stickers. I've gotten a lot of these stickers that I have on the front as well as I have some sticker spreads on the inside from Redbubble. I get a lot of my stickers. Another thing that I started doing, for example, on my overhyped book club spread is I printed out things from the internet and just glued them in and that's another way to incorporate some stuff into your spreads that you wouldn't you know be able to draw otherwise. Okay so now it's time for my flip through. There are some spreads that I have copied from other people and I'm not going to claim that they are, are my original ideas. I'm going to cite my sources and say who inspired each spread or if it's some sort of thing that I found on Pinterest and I'll try and see like have anything that I mentioned that I found on Pinterest on my board so you can go back and see it there. I don't want to claim that I'm like the creator of some of these when I'm definitely not and give credit to the proper people that inspired me. This is the cover. I have a bunch of stickers from Redbubble and some more on the inside as well. Some random stickers I've just gotten in book boxes or from pre-order incentives. Now we have the index page which I've used a little bit just to write down where everything is. <laughs> this is my old sort of bullet journaling before I really knew what I was doing and I don't think it looks that great. I just wrote down the series that I read in 2018. So I have my Shadowhunters page and just a bunch of Shadowhunters stickers. And then here is kind of the start of where I feel like I knew what I was doing with bullet journaling. This is an anticipated books list and some 2019 reading goals. These two spreads I got inspiration from, from books with Chloe, which you'll see I get inspiration from her a lot because she just has a lot of great ideas. This is a list of all the books that I've read. Now I have a YouTube growth tracker and a spread just writing down the book signing events I've been to and a video tracker.
This is a page for the different buddy reads that I've done and the readathons that I have participated in. Now we get on to my monthly spreads. January had a snow theme and then I go straight into my wrap up. I kind of have struggled with how to draw stars for a while. Then February of course has a nice little love theme for Valentine's Day. This is my booktubes game spread. I copied this directly from Liv at Olivia Reads A Latte. And then this is my wrap up spread for February where you can see I started outlining the stars instead of just doing them in yellow. Next is March and I really love this one because it's Priori themed with some orange blossoms and oranges. I read Priori of the orange tree this month and then I switched to just doing black stars. Next is April which is a nice spring theme. April's my birthday month and I love the spring so I just felt like this was appropriate. May I did a nice watermelon theme. I had a very ambitious TBR that month. And again the wrap up spread. And here is my book con haul. I don't know if I necessarily like the spread too much. I just wrote down what I got and used that sticker. I love this spread. I love the plant theme and the green color scheme. I don't know, it was just really fun to do. And again, this is a spread for the Biblio games where I did a page tracker and wrote down the different prompts and my June wrap up. Next in July, I did a fireworks theme and this month I started doing different things with my bullet journal. So I have a book junkie trials spread which was inspired by a tweet I will leave in the link. I did a page tracker and kind of a wrap up page with different statistics. Next is my owl spread. Again, I got this idea from Books with Chloe and I found these little drawings on Pinterest to do. These two quote pages were pulled from Pinterest. I just found the pictures and copied them. And again, this Reading Rush spread is copied from Books with Chloe because she is the bullet journaling queen. And again, this whole badge idea directly from Chloe, I'm giving her all the credit. Next, I did a spread detailing the different challenges that happened throughout the week of the Reading Rush. This was really fun to do and a good way to keep track. And again, I did another anticipated books list for late 2019 and that big chunk of sparkle <laughs> tape is because I messed up. Next, I have an ARC tracker for physical and electronic books, and this just helps me keep track of the five reviews out. And now here we have my July wrap up, which I actually did on two different pages because I read a lot of books and I wanted to write what challenges they were for in each readathon that I did. I love this August spread. I love the celestial theme. And again, I did a page track, a uh, reading tracker inspired by Chloe. And this quote page on the left is pulled from Pinterest and then I did my nude spread similar to the owl spread. And then this will be for a nudes wrap up but I didn't do it yet. Next I have a spread for our overhyped book club. I just printed out our banners and stuff and here is a BTS readathon of the soul spread with another one. I drew the little logos that BTS has. I love them and then just a sticker spread where I put a bunch of stickers I bought into my spreads. This is some doodle practice to just try my hand at different doodles. A lover watercolor spread inspired by Jess from Tundra Tomes and now my August wrap up. And here is my September TBR. This was inspired by my best friend in real life. Melissa because she sent me her September spreads and it had these similar leaves and I just copied from her and that is the end of this little flip through. Okay, so that is all for this video. Please let me know down below if you have a reading bullet journal or if you're interested in starting one, um, what your favorite thing is about it and what you're most looking forward to with having a bullet journal if you're just starting one. I'm really excited to talk to a lot of people about this because I'm just having like a complete blast trying something new and having a lot of fun with it. So with that being said, have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.